Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Josh Doyle and you're watching Money Mondays. Basically what this is, is every single Monday I drop a video of me analyzing a deal in my marketplace, your marketplace, wherever it may be, um, the good, bad, and the ugly. I analyze a deal, I go through the numbers, and I kind of give you guys my two cents on the property um, just as uh, an experienced real estate investor so you can pick up some tips and tricks on how I look at properties, how I look at areas, and uh, just a a more of an in-depth look at how my brain works when I'm actually looking for property. Okay, so I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to jump right into this, guys. Uh, basically, what I have found here is I've gone on to Kijiji.ca, which is a local marketplace, and I found a condo that's currently up for rent, so this way I can find out an accurate rental figure for you guys. Um, now, this is in Burlington, Ontario, a small... Uh, city near where I'm living that I grew up in and this condo is renting for $16.50 per month and it says down here at the bottom of the listing that the landlord is going to pay for all the rent except for the hydro and the hydro individually metered usually ranges from $40 to $50 a month so that's good now moving forward we know how much this property will we can get for rent if we buy this property and kind of what this homeowner is looking to do, basically uh, just passing the hydro off onto the tenant. So let's analyze their deal and see how the deal looks if they were to purchase this type of property today. So then what I did was I went over to realtor.ca where there's a lot of all the home listings on the MLS. And basically I found a, a one bedroom condo, exact same thing in that same building that this rental is up for sale, or sorry, this rental is up for lease. So what we're gonna do now that we have this information of the purchase price on the property, we are going to take this information and I'm gonna transfer it over into my spreadsheets. What you guys can see here is I have already inputted all the numbers. I didn't want to waste any time uh, of you guys watching me type numbers or draw on the whiteboard. So this way I can spend more time with you guys and uh, actually go through line per line what I'm talking about on each item to give you guys a deeper understanding of this deal and the inner workings of an actual real estate deal. Um, this is super important guys. Obviously you're invest or you're interested in real estate if you're watching this video. So it's very important to really understand all of these items that I go through in detail um, when you're analyzing deals. If you guys have any questions, feel free. You can always send me an email or shoot me a DM on Instagram. I love talking about real estate and I love looking at deals, as you can see. So yeah, don't feel like you're bugging me. Ask me a question anytime. I would love to give you guys a hand. So here we go, guys. The purchase price is 360,000. Okay, I got that off the listing that I just showed you. Based on 20% down, that would be $72,000 down, leaving us with a mortgage of $288,000, okay? Now we're gonna go to the bank and we're gonna get a 30-year amortization. This means that we're gonna have a 30-year uh, loan. I just spoke to my broker today and he says that on a investment property, we can get 3.5% roughly. We can get a little bit lower. Actually, you know what, we can get 3.5%. Uh, 3.9% on an investment property. Um, the the 3.5 he was quoting me was for a variable rate. Uh, that's another strategy, but we'll get into that into in another video. So at 3.39, our mortgage payment is 12.72 a month. So 12.72 a month. Our closing costs for the property. This is lawyer fee, land transfer tax, and title insurance. This is roughly going to cost us about $7,500 for a property of this size and uh, value. So the total cash invested, guys, between the 20% the down payment and the closing costs are going to be about $79,500. Keeping in mind that our holding costs column here is blank, this would be, we would be assuming that we could get tenants in this property at that rental price before uh, our first mortgage payment came out, which I think for that rental price is, is very likely. Now we could be conservative and add one month of holding costs in here, which would basically be a mortgage payment 
property tax and holding costs, uh, which we'll get into down here below, which is basically utilities and whatnot. All of that would be holding costs on the property. Uh, but right now we're going to leave that blank because I'm very confident that we could rent out that type of property in no time. Okay, so estimated after repair value. This is, uh, just ignore this for now, guys. This is another strategy that I use on other properties when I actually renovate properties, which is another completely different strategy for another video. So we'll ignore this category or this uh, these couple sections for now. The cash left in the deal, the same thing as total cash invested, 79500 and our estimated mortgage payment is going to be the $1,272. Now our estimated monthly rent guys is $1,650 because that's what this guy right here, the exact same one bedroom condo, he's asking $1,650. We're bringing in $1,650, our mortgage payment is $1,272. Let's get into our expenses, our monthly expenses. Property tax, $292. That's in and around how much it would cost for this type of property. Insurance on a rental property, $150 a month. Actually, it being a condo, let's drop that down to $100 a month. Um, I'm paying $150 a month on a fully detached house, uh, legal duplex. So $150 is a little steep for this type of property. Maintenance. Now, what I do is I take 5% of the monthly rental income and I put that aside for maintenance. So what this number comes out to is $82.50 a month. Um, gas for a condo, it's going to be low, but let's just be conservative, $75. Hydro and water. Now hydro, he said that the landlord, sorry, said that they're going to pass the hydro off onto the tenant and that's going to be about $50, but that's not our responsibility. But high, or water, water actually is going to be so let's just assume that we're going to pay 50 bucks a month. Vacancy, 3% of the monthly rental income. And that equals $49.50. So it rounds up to $50. Now our operating expenses, if you were to add all these up guys, it comes up to it comes out to $649. That's how much money it costs for on out of our pocket to operate this condo per month. So our total expenses with mortgage payment guys is $19.20 and $66. Now keeping in mind that is without our $336, sorry, $386 a month in maintenance fees. So we got to park this in here somewhere. Let's add that on top of, since I don't have a maintenance, I don't buy condos guys, so I don't have a column for this. Um, but let's add this on top of our uh, maintenance. Okay guys, so let's add this amount on top of our maintenance. So we'll add that amount plus our maintenance, just so it actually tallies up here for us. So look how it changed our numbers here. Now our total expenses with the mortgage payment is $2,307.18 meaning that our total cash flow, our total monthly cash flow for this property is negative $657 per month. That's incredible, guys. That means that this property, you're losing $657 in cash flow a month. You're negative underwater. Um, so all I can say about this property is that this landlord is... Um, Number one, he did not purchase the property at today's value at three hundred and sixty thousand. It doesn't make sense to purchase it at three hundred and sixty thousand if you're renting it out for a mere sixteen fifty a month. This guy obviously purchased it a long time ago and has a much smaller mortgage on it or up to market value, but he put a much larger down payment down on this property to shrink his mortgage payment so he actually is breaking even or cash flowing. Now, option number one that I spoke about is the more likely uh, because option number two is a very small return on investment. And I don't think anybody that is an intelligent investor would purchase an investment like that when there's way better opportunities out there. Um, but guys, this just goes to show how the market really is in my local markets. Um, if you're purchasing property straight up, especially something like this and only charging 1650, you know, 
there isn't much money to be made, especially in this scenario. Um, you're lucky to be cash flowing in my local market if you're buying turnkey single family homes. Now, at the same time, guys, this is why I'm doing what I do in my market and I'm super creative about the investing strategy that I pick. And basically what I do is I purchase single family properties that have the, the capability to be converted into multi-unit buildings or multi-unit properties. So instead of just getting rent for one unit, I will turn it into two, three, four units and jack up the, the monthly rental income on that specific property. And then my expenses still stay relatively low compared to how much money I'm bringing in. So I'm actually forcing appreciation, forcing cash flow, forcing value into properties. Um, so that will be for another video where I actually dive deep into that topic and show you guys an in-depth example of what I'm actually doing. We have projects coming up now. Um, I'm closing on a property in uh, about a month and a half where we're converting it into a triplex. So you guys will see all about that. Um, leave me a comment in the comment section below, guys, if you guys are interested in seeing that. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm going to wrap this Monday Monday up. I don't want it going too long. If you haven't already, please smash that like button and please subscribe to the channel if you, uh, if you haven't already. So until next time, guys, thank you very much.